Hello and welcome to a live with Amanda. I'm excited to be here today and we're going to be talking about how to save up for larger expenses in your private practice. And so depending on how much of a financial guru you are, whether it's for your personal finances or your business finances, it's going to depend really on your approach on how you have been saving for larger expenses or how you're going to move forward in saving for large expenses. And I can tell you what we do. So in the past, we haven't really saved for any expenditures. We've just taken it out of our operating account. Like if we had the money there, we're like, hey, we have the money, we can do this, let's do this. There are pros and cons to that. One of the pros is like, if it's there, you use it, great. And if it's not there, you don't get it and that's fine too. The, the con of that is that if something comes up that you either really need, you really want, or you really want to support and the money isn't there, it's like, what if you really need to do it, right? So, and so we've decided to add a line item on our budget. So I don't know if you create budgets. If you don't already create a budget for your private practice, I recommend that you create one that projects out the whole year. That That's what I did. I created a whole budget for 2024 and I added something for capital expenditures. I already save up for things like expansion, for savings, for trainings, things that are a little bit more costly and maybe don't come up every single month, but that we know that we need money for. But what we weren't really saving up for is things that come up that you can't imagine they're gonna come up. You don't know they're gonna come up until they come up. So I'll give you an idea of what I mean. So we have a pretty robust testing department right now. We have hired a bunch of psychologists and school psychologists, and it's been fantastic. We are rocking and rolling with evaluations. And we want to make that process smoother. If you do evaluations in your practice, you'll know you need a lot of testing materials. You need admin support. It takes hours to administer, interview, write the reports, do the testing. So we're trying to really streamline that process. And one way that we can do that is purchasing iPads in order to administer some of the tests. Some you still have to physically administer. There's like no getting around it. If you're familiar with some of the testing, like the ADOS, for instance, it's like, there's no way to get around. There's this massive bucket of toys and supplies that you have to physically have. And it's like, you're not going to be able to do that on, a, on an iPad. But there are some tests that you can administer on an iPad. And we really want to make it as easy as possible for both the user, for our clients, and for the evaluators. And so we have a team of evaluators now that evaluate all probably like pretty much at the same time. We can't guarantee that we are necessarily gonna be able to pass around iPads. And so I'm trying to think off the top of my head. We need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight iPads. And that is something that is costly, right? We know that we're not just going to buy eight iPads out of our operating account, whether we could afford it or not, whether the money's there or not, we don't wanna operate like that way anymore. So we're going to put money aside in a capital expenditures fund. And then when we hit the amount that we need to make the purchase, we will then purchase that amount. If one month is really great and we want to add more money maybe to that expenditures because we know we really need to get the iPad sooner than later, we can do that. Or if a month is low, then maybe we wouldn't put in as much money. It can be kind of variable. And so when I do plan my budget, there are a couple of things that are fixed. Like Rent is fixed. It's what it is. There's nothing we can do about that. Salaries are pretty much fixed. Even they go up because some people get raises over the years, over the year. But there are some things that are variable, especially things like capital expenditures, trainings. Um, I'm trying to think of a couple other things like may or may not decide to do even expansion. If it's a, if it's a slow year, we don't have extra money to put into expansion. We're not going to put money into that fund for expansion. And so really depends how you do your own budgeting. But the bottom line is if you don't already have a budget, I highly recommend you have one. We'll talk about budgeting sort of like 101 in a minute. But first, I want to thank our sponsor, Therapinos. If you're looking for an electronic health record that's really full service, one that you can do your in-person sessions or your online sessions, they do have a telehealth platform. You can bill insurance directly through there, or you can take credit card payments if you're private pay or input cash payments. They are really full service. 
They are wonderful for solo practices because it's really user friendly, but they're great as you expand into a group practice. They're really designed to help the group practice owner stay organized. That's my favorite thing. I love the reporting functions. I pull reports all the time from Therapy Notes. It's my favorite thing to do. And so I highly recommend you check out Therapy Notes. So if you don't already have a budget, you're like, Amanda, you want me to put in money for capital expenditures, but I am not even have a budget for like all the things. I definitely recommend that you take a look at 2023. You look at the variations and where you spent, look at the things that were fixed, maybe make a column for fixed expenses like rent, maybe your salary if you're in a solo practice, things that you know are gonna come up. Then look at things that are variable that maybe go up or down in a month or that don't come up every month, like uh, an insurance, right? Uh, I'm thinking CPH, that's who we use. Uh, your liability insurance, there we go. It's not every, you know, you know, you don't have to pay it every month, you pay it once a year. There are dues to organizations, maybe you pay once a year. I want you to map all that out and put that where it belongs on your budget so you can really plan. One of the things that will take a solo practice to the next level or a group practice to the next level is to really understand your numbers. And when I do coaching and consulting with people and they understand their numbers, I know like they're on the mark, they're on, they're on the money around where their practice is at. So I highly recommend that if you don't even already have a budget, that you do write out a budget for your practice. I hope this was helpful. I'll see you soon, everybody. Bye.